Well, I just did a video on a, on one of the guns that was in my car for four years. This video, this gun I just found, I won't tell you where, but um, I forgot where it was at. And this is a H&K USP that I used to keep in my go bag, um, but, and it's loaded, but I haven't unloaded or cleaned this in Shit, it's got to be four years, five years, and I can tell by looking at it, it looks like it's got a little dingy thing that's rust, so I'm probably going to get some rust off here. So let me, uh, my mag's there. I haven't taken this down in I don't know how long. Double action, single action. Uh, it's got a safety. I'm not a fan of a safety. Uh, I forgot how I ended up with this gun. Who freaking knows? I'm pretty sure it's going to come apart probably like a 45. Get it in this area and it pushes back here. Here we go. I bet you it's right there. Yep, so push that out. This should come forward to reveal this interior. And then uh, pull my barrel or my uh, spring here. And pull off the old barrel. Now that's pretty much filled stripped. I haven't had that thing apart in I don't know how long. So anyway, let's uh, let's see how dirty this is. Uh, I'm gonna get a, a clean patch here, nice white patch, and we're just gonna wipe it down with no oil or nothing, just on what it had, and see what I get. Getting a little bit of top rust. Can you see that? Not a lot. A little more as I'm rubbing. This was not in a case. It was sitting in this holster in a place that it was open to air, etc. So, uh, just cleaning the outside of the metal, I can tell it removes some of that kind of dingy look. Once I get some oil on here and clean it up, it's going to do a better job. But, uh, I mean, you know, this is, this is dirtier than I like, but it's not uh it's not like malfunction dirty it's not like this gun isn't gonna work because of this um, I don't like it and I would rather this patch be clean but you know what I'm gonna use the other side of the patch it has a little bit of dirt on this barrel because that's tends to be for some reason a rust area and I'm gonna see what I get off that little bit of discoloration that's a little bit of like what I would call surface rust even though it's not pitting if I left that another five years it may start pitting that's why when you get a pitted rifle or a pitted gun you know that thing was abused um, so this is just a wipe down with no oil and it made my little patch a lot dirtier than I would like. Now this is all pretty much polymer, so I wouldn't expect anything off this. Um, all the pieces look fine. There's no rust in there. Uh, my rails look good. I never really polish up these rails. I don't. These rails have a little bit of a rough edge to me, which I don't like. I'm really surprised I never worked on this. This is really, this is not smooth like what I like on my rail. So I'm going to take a little piece of sandpaper to this. I think it's like a little thousand, whatever. Just going to pull that off. And I'm going to give these rails a little once over. I do not like the roughness I'm getting on there. Oh yeah, just that little bit. Huge difference. That's with no oil. 
Still got a couple little rough edges here on the top, right here. I don't like rough edges on contact areas on my guns. And I'm not pressing extremely hard, but I'm pressing enough that I want to be able to feel the difference. And I do. That roughness and jagged went away. There's still a little catch right there. I can feel with my finger that I don't like. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a few rub downs. I like a little massage. I'm just massaging my baby. Yeah. Ooh, that feels good. Oh, right there. Oh, yeah. Much, much better. Huge difference. Oh, I can tell this side's not this side was rougher. This one has a little bit of roughness, but not like this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this one, take off that kind of like underneath the edge there. I'm gonna go push pressure this way. I'm gonna put it flat, and then I'm gonna put it this way, and then get those rounded edge. Now I know there's gonna be people, the mechanics is supposed to be square and you're taking away and you're create whatever. I do not like rough guns. Oh man, huge difference. Still a little bit on this one I don't like. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's my girl. So these little ones back here are pretty little. The little guide rails are pretty freaking tiny. But, same thing. I'm taking off really minor imperfections on these rails. I'm not removing or changing the specs. Of course, I didn't measure it before and after. So I say, well, you should have measured it to see how much you're taking. All right, whatever. Look, people, I just tell you what I do with my guns. All right. So this is pretty smooth. I don't really have to touch this one. I may have already cleaned that one or it came that way. But this right here is really smooth. I don't feel like any rough edges whatsoever. To me, this is finished. And these weren't really finished. Now, if I really wanted to uh, do it, I would put a little flitz on there with my little Dremel. Am I plugged in? I am. This is a little coarser than I wanted on the Dremel. I can use this, but I would rather use a softer tip that I usually keep around here. And I don't see it, so I have this little bag of extras, and I will just pull one of these out. Ah, oh, this one's a little cottony, even though it's dirty. So I'm going to put this in here. And uh, I might take a little bit of this flitz. This is a really mild polish. I use this on all my stainless steel guns. I don't use it on my blue guns, but on my stainless steel guns, it polishes. It makes it really shiny. You, uh, if you see any of my stainless steel guns, if they're shiny, it's because I put some of this on it. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that, not much, and um, this is going to get the lid to go back on, right? You don't want this stuff drying out on you. And I can either rub this on the Dremel, which it'll suck into the Dremel tool, but I like to put it exactly on what I'm going to be doing. So I'm putting a little bit on there, a little bit on there a little bit on that rear one and a little bit on that rear one. Now I will put the rest on my Dremel. Turn this to low setting as slow as it will go 
and then I'm going to polish those off. And what that sandpaper didn't remove, any little minor things, this is going to remove. Again, I'm not taking, people are all panicky about using a Dremel. You'll ruin your gun. If you're doing abrasive stuff, you will. You keep the speed down and you use mild things, you're not going to hurt anything. This is just like me running my finger over this. 50, 100 times. This Dremel is just doing it for me. I get my little back pieces. I have to look at the gun on what I'm doing, so if I'm not in camera, Should be seeing that shininess come out of these rails. That flitz is just removing, making this really like mirror glass. I'm going to hit the top of this just to show you what it does to like the top of that. Okay, so you should be able to see how that top little thing that I was, uh, since I just did the top, you might be able to see the difference of the shininess where it goes away. Now I'm going to clean off my little rails there, get rid of that flitz. Some people will put that flitz on this. Put the slide on and work the slide with the flitz. Uh, that will cause rubbing and wearing against metal on metal. Is it bad? I don't necessarily think it's bad. Um, get not at all out of the crevices and you use a lot to get this in your um, in your rails. But you kill two birds with one stone by doing that. Um, Okay, so can you see the difference in those rails? I can sure feel the difference. Man, huge difference. Night and day. If I, if, I, if I had you rub your finger on this with your eyes closed and not knowing, went and did this, brought it back and said rub it, you would think it was two different guns. You'd be like, it's not the same gun. That's, that's how much that little bit did. Uh... So I usually polish this little ramp. This one's pretty polished, but I'll go ahead and polish it since I have the flitz out and it's already on here. And I will just, uh... Go ahead and polish up this ramp. Remember, I didn't put any more flits. This is just still that little flits that I used on those little pieces. And you should be able to tell the difference on what it did to that ramp. Minor, minor imperfections it took off there. Rick, you're changing the specs and you're ruining it. Look, I am not doing... I'm probably taking off less than a bullet sliding up and down this ramp 30 or 50 times. You put a box of ammo through here, you're probably doing more damage to this ramp than I'm doing here. So... Alrighty. So now that ramp looks nice and uh, polished.
that little rag on there. Get that mirror, that mirror look. It's really hard for me to see on this little screen, so I'm, I'm doing a lot of angles. So hopefully you can see it. And that's about it. I don't really see. You see this little wear part right here? See where the bluing's kind of wearing off there? If you have wear issues like this, this is where you're getting drag and there's contact and metal or something is removing. You're either removing something from the other thing that's causing this or you're removing it from this and you're probably removing it from both. So I'm going to go ahead and polish this up because what people used to do is say if you shoot a thousand or two thousand rounds your guns will self polish and you'll pull your gun out and you'll see these little wear areas and those wear areas are removing imperfections when it was made so by doing this little polishing that I do I'm just kinda over time instead of firing a thousand rounds to have this occur naturally I'm just kinda speeding up the process I'm not really changing a whole bunch but I'm gonna go ahead get a good look at that where that wears at and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, polish that off and I don't even know if I'll, I'll put more flits on here it might be enough to already do it metal and you're gonna ruin it all right whatever that freaking how many guns have I worked on either in a military in civilian law enforcement or on my own and I don't think I've ruined one I may have had a couple parts broken uh, now if you turn this on high you notice I can put my finger on here and it's not really doing a whole bunch if you turn this on high and create a bunch of heat and abrasive and you start putting pressure on here, then people will say you're changing the hardening of the uh, the metal and this is hardened and because you're heating it up, this has no heat whatsoever. So if you feel something and you're heating it up, then maybe you got issues. All right, and how does that look? Is it any different? Can y'all see a difference? I can see a difference. I don't know if you guys can. Sure does feel nice and smooth. Is that gonna change the performance of the gun? I don't know. I just didn't like when I see wearing. If I see wearing somewhere, then I tend to look. You notice there's no wearing around this area that latches in. So that tells me there's no rough air edges that are running around hooking and scraping and removing things. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hell, since I got rim oil out. I'm trying to get rid of this rim oil. And this gun isn't like I'm carrying it uh, It's not like I'm carrying it out in the elements. If I was carrying this on my side, I would put some better oil on it because it's being exposed. And I'm not saying better. I just wasn't impressed with the rim oil when I put it on those nails. It did not protect that well. But again, I put those nails out changing temperatures and doing all that stuff out, you know, with no protected, no cleaning. Most people don't treat their guns that way. So, um... Yeah, that looks a lot better to me. Trying to see on that little screen. Sorry, people. I was looking at getting another camera. There's a nice Canon, but shit, they want 600 bucks for it. $699 or something. But I'm really tired of using this camera, so I may have to budget and put a couple hundred away and get me a better camera 
And again, when I have all this light on, all this extra light, this little Panasonic here um, tends to get jerky. I don't know if it's getting too much information. Get a little patch down here and see what's going on. Yeah, a little bit, not much. Now there's a lot of people that say never stick anything in this part of the gun because you'll ruin or nip the crown. If you're going long distance with really extreme accuracy, that's probably a good tip. You should always enter from here where the bullet enters to clean it. And that way you don't damage the crown here. But I'm using plastic and cloth and pistols aren't usually for long range and damaging the crown really isn't going to affect your accuracy that much unless you're going for a really long shot. So that's the little ramp I did. Remember that little ramp? Got all my pieces done. Oh, I didn't spray down my, uh, and let this kind of soak in while I'm cleaning this other things. I usually spray down all my parts, let the oil or dissolve any carbon or help clean up things and uh, so that way when I get to it it's had a little time to sit. So this gun is going to go back into its uh, secret hiding place for another however many years. I always like to run something through my magazine well. Magazine wells are a lot of time neglected. I squirted some oil in there. And I, even though this is plastic, there still may be metal pieces, clips, different things in there. So uh, if you're not doing a complete breakdown, you want to make sure and get those... Uh, Alrighty, so we have that. Now I'll wipe down the uh, so now that I put oil on it, I'm not getting any of the tarnish or changing of my rag. Because remember I wiped it down with no oil, but because it had a decent coating, whatever I used and it wasn't exposed to the elements it wasn't that big of a deal I always like to shove a little rag in the little crevices to get down in there if I really want to get it clean I'll get me a nice q-tip and get those all your corners all your edges. Got a little bit of dirt there. That probably came from the rail. Q-tip does a great job on a rail. Got a little dirt out of that rail. Got a little dirt out of that rail. Okay, I think she uh, she looks pretty good there. So what am I going to put on her? Eh, what the hell. I'm just going to leave that in there. Again, people say that would be too much oil, it's going to do this, it's going to do that. I don't care, it's, it's going to whatever. Um, Wiped it all down, got some oil on it, put it back together. If I can remember how I took it apart.
So I just did a function check without the pin in there. This pin isn't even there. Now it's in. Function check. Always function check semi-automatics. Any gun, rifle, or etc. If it's a semi-automatic, a correct function check. You pull the trigger. It fires and you do not release this. You pull it and hold back. You re the gun while holding that back and then you should hear a trigger reset as I let it go forward. There's that trigger reset and then it should fire. That's how you do a function check to make sure it's put back together and everything's working. I'll give it a quick squirt down and wipe down. And that should hold me for another three, four, or five years. Uh, again, when I have guns like this loaded around the house or different areas, a garage, car, um, I just kind of put a coat on them and I'll uh, let it be. Okay, so this thing's full. I'm going to put this one in here. one in. Oh my god! He lasered when he reached for the gun! He went in front of the barrel and that was the... Oh my god! It's dang... Shut up, you freaking crazy people, man. People that have never worked around guns don't understand. Guns are pointed in police business all day, every day. We are raking or lasering somebody. You cannot do it. That's great on the range to be aware of your gun and your barrel, but just because... Uh, you're, you laser somebody or something goes in front of the barrel as long as your fingers off the trigger and you're using safety and your gun is in the safest place it can be if a guy walks by he's gonna get his legs lasered. if we're going through a door we're moving there's gonna be lasering there is no perfect range safety when you get into actual real life uh, using a gun for uh, protection guns take somebody into custody etc alright so this gun is loaded ready to go uh, it's cocked back. I, I think this has a decocker. If I pull this down, I think it will drop this hammer without firing it. I'll point this on the ground just to be safe. Yeah. So by pulling this down, it let the hammer drop, but there's a safety bar in there so it doesn't shoot. And that's how you decock it. So now it's ready to fire double action. Okay? Uh, what is this? The H&K USP Compact 45. Nice little gun. <laughs> People be like, oh, it's nice. yeah. I have to get. I got so many freaking holsters for different things, so I had to label my holsters, so I know what the hell holster goes with what gun. Because <laughs> I'll find all these holsters. I go, what the hell does this holster go to? Oh shit, that's for my H and K. All right, so that's uh, that's me cleaning up one of my guns that I found. All right, well, in that there, y'all have a good one.